Hi there, once again, welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on the topic of the basics of fluid mechanics. Here in lecture number four, we're going to take a look at an example of channel flow in the context of salt tectonics. So we'll look at some different types of channel flows that occur in salt tectonics, as well as kind of give you um, perhaps an introduction to what is even meant by the term salt tectonics. What we're looking at here in the figure is a kind of cartoon version of the Earth capturing the essence of what we'll look at in our study of salt tectonics. We have a slice through the um, transition from the continent and the continental shelf that's meant to be up here, down the continental margin, uh, so this would be like a passive margin, going down to the ocean floor, to the abyss. Um, and so we're looking at the, that transition along the uh, slope of a continent. This is basically a pile of sediment here in terms of what we're going to look at, and beneath it in gray would be salt. And this would be rock salt, which is a common um, rock type in sedimentary basins. It's effectively nearly incompressible and behaves pretty close to a Newtonian fluid with a very low viscosity, at least for earth materials, um, and that is a viscosity of 10 to the 18 pascal seconds, meaning that it flows readily. And the result of this weakness is that salt tends to migrate when you put stuff on top of it. So when you pile sediment uh, like we have here on top of salt, uh, it moves and the motion is basically the essence of salt tectonics. So what we're going to look at is a, a numerical experiment of a two-dimensional passive margin with salt underlying it. Now in this scenario, in this kind of picture that we're looking at here, we can expect to see a few different types of behaviors. One is that we might see Poissouli flow within the layer of salt if the overlying sediment is basically not moving, if it's stable. The reason we would have this flow here, as I hope you can see, is that we would have a pressure gradient within the channel because over here we have a thicker pile of sediment than we do down here, which means pressure over here is higher in the channel than it is down here, and so we might expect this Poissouli type of flow. Alternatively, if the sediment in this pile of overburden is not stable, um, meaning that it's being faulted, and um, here we have extension up at the top of the slope and some compression down at the bottom of the slope. It could be that this overburden is basically gliding along on top of the layer of salt, in which case we might expect to see dominantly the cuet type of flow in the salt, where we have this linear increase in velocity across the channel. And of course, as you might naturally imagine, you might expect to see some combination of the two depending on the scenario. So if we have here, you know, of course we do have our pressure gradient, but if the overburden is moving, but maybe not moving that quickly, we might be able to see a combination of Kuet and Poisouli flow uh, in the salt velocities. And here um, essentially are the results of this particular study by Gemmer et al. in 2004, where we have up at the top relatively thick pile of sediment down at the lower end of the elevations here. So this would kind of be down um, at the ocean um, side of the system. Relatively thick pile of sediments compared uh, to some of the examples we'll see later on. Of course, it's thinner than it is over here. And so we have this pressure gradient, but more importantly, we have stable sediment here. The sediment's not moving. Uh, you can see the velocity vectors here in the salt layer that show that very nice parabolic form increasing basically where we go from having a uniform thickness of sediment to where it starts to taper out is where you see those velocities and in this case we have a nice uh, Poissouli type of pressure driven flow. Now if we go down to the bottom here this is another uh, in both well actually all three of these these are numerical model calculations here we have a case where we have a relatively thin pile of sediment 
down at the ocean end of the system. And because that layer of sediment is thin, it's not able to support the gradient in the uh, thickness of the sediment. Basically, this pile of sediment's pushing on the thin end here. And because it's thin, it fails. And that results in this horizontal gliding of the sedimentary uh, layers on top of the salt. And you can see dominantly in that case, the Kuwait type of flow. Here in the middle, you have the combination of the two where you can see the salt uh, and the velocities in the salt showing that it's being translated horizontally. In the middle section here, you see dominantly what looks like a um, Poisouli type of flow, but maybe out here toward the end, you can start to see that you have this kind of combination of the Kuwait and Poisouli flows. In this case, here we have an intermediate thickness of sediment uh, down at the bottom. So, you know, depending on where you're looking at in the world, what kind of passive margin you're looking at, you might expect to see these different kinds of flows. And obviously the type of flow may have implications for how the salt's going to migrate over the longer term. So just an example then of why these channel flows are uh, important to consider and, uh, and how they can be modeled. So that's it. Go ahead and take the quiz. And when we come back, we'll be talking about uh, counterflow in the asthenosphere.